In the very front part of the brain, there's a part that helps us initiate activities. What does that mean? Get up and go. And our patients universally developed apathy, which is the loss of get up and go. So that's the frontal part. You yes. Just, you just sit there like a blob or what? Well, yes, and sit there more than is normal. We have patients that will watch hours of television, 10, 15, will sit for or sleep for 20 hours of the day. Oh, wow. And so it looks like a depression but it's not typical. A person that was highly motivated, maybe a businessman, who's suddenly sitting on the couch hours after hours, it kind of sounds like a depression, but it's so distinctly different because that person doesn't seem to be bothered by sitting that long. So the people around that person that's sleeping, that's got no mental get up and go, that the frontal lobe seems to be changing, who notices that? The, the spouse, the people at work, who? How do you know? What's... I think both notice it. Many times the spouse says, it, is it a midlife crisis? Is it something else? And folks seek psychiatric care. It's not to discourage that because that could still be the diagnosis, but it's a little different. In addition to the apathy, there's something called disinhibition. So disinhibition, is that abnormal inhibition or what is that? It's the loss of a social filter. Uh, so you don't have a social filter, so I I'm may I'm just all of a sudden spit during while I'm talking or? Actually, sure. We find that people will do abnormal burping, belching behaviors. Some people use a lot of expletives or curse words yeah. as part of normal language. Somebody who would never say such words. Other people will say unfiltered comments. Perhaps they see someone in the waiting room and comment on their dress or appearance out loud to the person. That's not appropriate socially. So do you say, what's going on with that person? Is that, is that the way that you, you notice, everybody notices something's different? Does the person notice something's different? The person doesn't have insight. They don't know that they don't know. And in the beginning, a lot of people think that that person is just mean or rude. They don't realize that it's a disease until it progresses into increasingly bizarre or weird behaviors. In the examples when you say bizarre and weird behaviors, how bad are we talking about? Or that's progressive. Some of the behaviors that we see are changes in eating behaviors. There is an on but no off button. So an folks, on but no off, yes. that sounds like me, you just eat all the time. Well, at a certain point, you start to feel guilty about eating too many things. So in this disease, there is no guilt. It's an impulsive, compulsive behavior where folks will just keep eating and not stop. A great example is I had a family where the wife was affected with FTD and the husband took away all of the snacks and everything out of their pantry. Uh, it's FTD, that's going to be frontotemporal disease, dementia. Frontotemporal dementia. And so the husband starts taking away things. Because she was eating everything. And so finally he caught her one day eating the bag of sugar. That was all that was left. It's a very desperate craving for sweets and carbohydrates. So do they, would somebody normally say something's going wrong in the brain, she uh, uh, needs to see a psychiatrist and really what they're having is frontotemporal disease? Yes, and I think it eventually they make their way to getting a diagnosis, but the goal is to understand that some of these behaviors are a little different than you would see in a typical psychiatric illness.